Hello, this is Jenny the Cube and today we're going to play Night Call, which is a brand new game I've never played before. The idea is that you are a taxi driver and you drive at night in Paris and you are investigating a case murder, a murder case. So I'm very, very intrigued and I want to play. So let's do it. New game. Choose investigation. The judge. Victims have all something in common and the motives seem clear. But which suspect could have done it? Balance case perfect for the first run. The angel of death. Random victim, a non-motive, weird case, slightly more difficult. The Sandman. The victim may feel random at first, but there's a connection. Yet, the motives may be hard to find. Dark and twisted. Randomly picked an unsolved investigation. Hmm, let's start with the first one. Perfect for first run. Let's see. Oh, okay. mic is good. Choose the difficulty. Money will be easy to get by, the investigation will be easier. Balance and hard. Let's do balance. It's usually what I play. Like no more difficulty. Hmm. I'm intrigued. I am intrigued. The team is from Paris, also. It's going to be so interesting because I lived for two years in Paris and it's going to be very interesting to see the metro, to recognize the streets. I'm kind of excited actually. I'm very intrigued, excited. And from what I heard, there was also like a money management because you're a taxi driver so you have to actually just like make money while investigating hmm what is happening what is happening doctor mm -hmm. here sir can Hear me? Or do I need to speak up? Yes, speak up. Is it okay with you? Is my voice loud enough? Yes, it's fine. <sighs> she takes a deep breath. Doctor, sir, you just spent two weeks in a coma. Oh my god. The wall bounces around your head. You need a moment to understand its meaning. Coma? The wall scratches along your throat. Yes, you, you were the victim of an assault. The word resonates in your head, victim. You are aware a serial killer is currently on the loose in Paris. You feel the contents of your stomach crawling up your throat. The judge, as the police call the killer, assaulted you. The bullet touched your liver and, in most circumstances, it would have been fatal. We choose to put it in an induced... Her voice becomes more distant face. You taste bill at the back of your mouth. Your head is burning. You hear a whistle in one ear. Your finger moves to your wound. Underneath the bandages, you can feel hard skin. It is incredibly painful. Did they... I'm sorry? Did they catch the judge? 
Now, what about my passenger? He was, he was dead before you even got out of your car. The doctor is silent for a second, a very awkward second. She hesitates. Mm. The police would like to see you as soon as possible to ask you some questions. After all, you're the only one who has survived the judge. Noise in the hallway attracts your attention. You try to turn your head to no avail. You need to rest. She leaves the room. Her voice resonates in the hallway. I don't care. He's the only witness. He's... Another female voice joins in. A strong, authoritarian voice. You can't clearly make up what she's saying. A strange feeling washes over you. It's not pain, not fatigue. Some old combination of the two. Before being in this hospital room, he never realized that anger was made up of a combination of pain and exhaustion. Anger. A feeling you know all too well. Days go by and a month later. Whoa. Night one. I'm out. I'm out and I guess I'm back a taxi driver. Whoa. Well, look, I've got a bit of a problem. A real problem, that is. You have a pounding headache. It's your first time behind the wheel since... since the attack. Are you listening to me? You catch your boss's eye in the rearview mirror. He's watching you closely, trying to make out what's going on in your head. You know I'm worried about you, don't you? I know. You like a son to me, you know. I know. And you know he's about to tell you the story of his tightly fit again. When my father died and left me the store, I could have sold it. I could have retired, gone back to the old country. But I decided to start a cab fleet with the money he left me, to hire the guys from the neighborhood. And that's why I've got 45 guys like you working for me. His hands flutter in the air. But none of them are any match for you. He smiles. His voice suddenly takes on a serious note. Do you want me to go over everything again? He points to the equipment on the dashboard, the meter, the GPS. You haven't been in taxi for weeks. Maybe you do need a little refresher. Yeah, good idea. Right then. Well, first, the map. You spot potential customers and try to guess where they'll be going. Then you decide. When a customer orders a taxi, if there's no one else around, you have to go pick them up. He shrugs. That's the way it goes. It's business. No problem. Though the fares, you look at the map and decide whether or not you want to take them. And then you drive. He flashes a quick mechanical smile. You know it well. When he talks about rock, he talks about rock. That's all. When you shift his over, we do the numbers and his voice trails off as if searching for the right words. And that's all. It's pretty simple. There's no reason why you cannot do it. Oh, right. No overtime. We're in France, here, and there are rules, regulations. 
You might not see it that way, but no one likes having a driver who hasn't slept for 24 hours. He looks away. Something been bothering him since he got into the cab. Anyhow, you know the ropes. You get it. I know you're going to do a good job. What the matter? He both keeps quiet for a while, as if he's hesitant to speak, and then I don't think it's a good idea, you shouldn't be driving. The murderer is still out there and we think he's going to come back for you. We? Your colleagues, I do too. Anyway. I'll let you get back to work. Every minute spent in your taxi is a minute lost. He gives you a smile, half in ironic, half serious. You can count on me. He scratches at an invisible stain on the armrest. Yeah, I know, that's the problem. He smiles. You both open the door and exit the cab. You watch him cross the street and enter the fleet garage. A couple of colleagues are miling about. Faxes are coming and going. They all ignore you, consciously or unconsciously. You're branded. You sit there a moment, then turn the key in the ignition. The hum of the engine sends a tingle down your spine. It's impossible to describe how you missed that feeling. It's back to the night shift, back to life. Despite the attack, despite it all. Wow, so I can go to any place, but the shoulder will be you. So interesting. Let's go to the shortest. Xavier Turnev, I need to get out of here. Accept. You pull out next to the sidewalk a few meters from an abandoned warehouse. No sign of a passenger. You wait a minute, staring at the matter. You really don't feel like wasting your time on people who... You hear a window break on the second floor of the warehouse. A body falls heavily to the sidewalk. You lay your hand on the door handle when... A man dressed entirely in black jumps out the window and lands on the body. He stands up and takes a few steps over to your cab. I have the cab I ordered. You nod your head very, very slowly. Super, I'm the one you're waiting for. Be right there. He turns around, places his finger on the neck of the inanimate body, takes his pulse. He comes back over, opens the door and jumps into the back seat. You can start driving. No you please. You follow orders without a, single, a, a second thought. Wow, that's kind of a first passenger. In back, your passenger smells like sweat and gun power. He's been running, been in a fight maybe. Probably. His muscle bulge in rhythm with his heart, which is racing. Wow, good evening. Pretty good hair. He smiles or tries to. You can see blood on his otherwise impeccably white teeth. I screwed up a little, but all in all, it was a good evening. You? Mm. Mm, yeah. Okay, alright. Come on, let's talk about the elephant in the room. You aren't to me, and you know it. I'm the masked joker. Silence. 
you squint to get a closer look at your passenger. The mass joker. The hero that makes Persian night more peaceful. No? You slowly shake your head. Nope. That didn't ring a bell. I'm all over Twitter. So probably on the radio and in the newspaper, I think. And what exactly do you do? I protect people. I'm a guardian. Like a superhero? No, I don't have any superpowers. But it's the same idea. Yes, I mean, for the moment. I mostly take care of small time crooks, pickpockets. It's not very prestigious, but you have to start somewhere. You open your mouth, but nothing worth saying comes out. You've got to start somewhere. <laughs> so, about the name, you like it? I'm not sure I get it. It's Joker, like the cow, and mask because I'm wearing a mask. Silent and shoes. Your passenger eventually clear her throat. See? I wanted something that wasn't too... He searches for the right road, beats around the bush, and eventually comes out with... Problematic. I did a lot of brainstorming and came up with the masked joker. I haven't gotten great feedback, but it's hard these days to find a name everyone likes. You have to make sacrifices if you want your core business to succeed. That's what they tell us at school, anyway. At school? Yes, and ENK? He freezes. Shit, I almost gave up the name of my business school. What an idiot. Can you imagine if Bruce Wayne went around to neighborhood? He was Bruce Wayne. Who? Yeah? No, Batman. If Batman went around turning everyone in, he was Bruce Wayne. I'm getting all mixed up. Well, this guy is not the smartest in the room. Like, not at all. Not at all. He touches his side for a while like he's looking for want. You're getting close to your destination. I think, I think I'm hurt. You want me to take you to the hospital? No, no, I'm fine. I shouldn't have jumped out of the window like that. But you're already coming down the street and I didn't want to make you wait. <laughs> Pull over right there in front of the driveway. You obey. Don't worry, it's, it's just a flesh wound. I'll be home in two minutes and have everything I need to take care of myself. He pays and struggles to get out of the cab. One last thing. Please don't say anything about Ian Kid. I'm trying to lead a double life and it's not super easy. And Kid? And Kid, my business school. He freezes. Oh, I just got it. You're playing along. Okay, great. He looks at you for a minute. You're really a classy guy. He walks away, limping. You watch him as he tries several times to enter his building code before heading inside, finally. As you go to start the engine, you notice a few drops of blood on your fingers. From the bills the passenger handed you. Wow, let's take it. Hmm. What's next? A cat? An ambulance passes you and speed ahead. Okay. Crookie. You pull up to the sidewalk and wait for your passenger. Since it looks like a no show, you get out of the cab after a minute or two to smoke a cigarette. There's not much going on in this small town in the suburbs. 
You don't even know a suburb you were just like downtown. There are a few apartments that still have light on. A sweet scent hangs in the air. Eventually, you step out your cigarette and get back into the car. They saw you were in the year before, which is kind of peaceful at night. You jump, start all. A cat has managed to slip into the cab. It's sitting in the back seat, staring at you intently. You sit there for a moment, considering whether or not to shoo it away. But just as you're about to wave your hand, the cat shifts position and the sleeve of paper falls from its collar. You pick up the piece of paper and unfold it. A fragment of a map of Paris. The Salazar train station. You turn your eyes slowly to the cat. It seems to be expecting an answer. Are you going somewhere? The cat tilts his head to the side, as if to say yes. You you want to go to Saint Lazare? The cat tilts his head again. Are you a dog? That's an interesting question. <laughs> of course not. The cat slowly nods its head no. Your hands clutch your wheel tightly. What the hell is going on? You turn around to face the cat. Okay, fine, I'll take you. You let out a sight. You start talking to yourself in low tones as if to balance the conversation. No more, this is all perfectly normal. You start the cab, but cast a glance at the cat behind you. You're the one who ordered the cab? <laughs> you start to laugh. A few minutes go by, you try to break the ice. Simple question are probably best. Everything okay? Neither yes or no. More of a plenty than you. Are you meeting someone? No, that's not it. The cat is staring at you. The conversation seems to bore him. You seem to be well fed. Pretty strange, I must say. Did someone hurt you? A plaintive meow. Hey, you salt. You honor another meow. But longer and deeper. More heartfelt. You nod your head. What, a, what happened? Was it a man? No answer. A woman? Was she mean to you? The cat seems to be uncertain. I don't know. Change the subject. You let out a sight. Anyhow, I've already had a cat as a passenger. You are my first, in fact. A meow of disbelief. Yes, it's true. I just say some of my passengers are very unusual, but never like you. A contented meow. There's a first time for everything. You point to a light in the distance. That San Lazar will be there soon. A few years later, you stop at the drop-off area in front of the station. The first train doesn't leave for another hour. Where are you going? The cat stares at you without making a noise. Let me guess. Salada. If you were going to the suburbs of Paris, you wouldn't have need to come into town. So, somewhere in the northwest of France. Normandy? Somewhere by the sea? Hmm? The cat is looking at you and meows. A sharp sound, probably a yes. A very hungry yes. For the fish, I guess. <laughs> you check the time on the dashboard. It's time to go to get a real customer. You try not to think too much about the situation you're in and you hope that no one sees you taking to a cat. Okay, I won't bother you with all that. What a meow thanks? You sighed. 
Okay, come on. Time to say goodbye. You get off the cab and open the back door. A bill has appeared on the seat next to the cat. It is enough for the fare and more. Well, you're full of surprise, aren't you? I won't ask you where it came from. You smile and lean over to pet the cat. He leaps out of the car and darts between your legs. You can just make out its shape dashing up a flight of stairs and slipping between the bars of a gate. You get back in the car. You look at yourself in the rear view mirror. Your features are heavy with fatigue. Your right eyelid is twitching. As you start the car, you remember you are allergic to cats, but you haven't sneezed once. You pull out of the station. What well, tips is seven cents. Wow. Best tip ever. The door slowly opens and a woman gets into the back seat. Busset, having a good night? For a second you freeze. It's one of the cops working on the judge's case. She grins at you. Her voice creaks. You remember seeing her at the hospital. Something already bothered you about her there. You know, it's actually pretty crazy. For weeks. I've been saying to myself there's something off about you. Something not so nice. I dug around, bowled it over, bugged all my fellow cops about it because I was sure you lied to us. She has a cold sneer on her face. I'm going to be frank with you. She leans over to you. I don't think you're the judge. Now, I just can't picture it. She squints, like she's trying to make you out from far away. Like you'd have gone to the extent of hurting yourself. Yeah, between us, it's a bit of a stretch. She stares at you. But not enough of a stretch for my chief to stop going on and on about you. Seriously, he talks about you all the time. If I didn't know better, I would think he had a crush on you. Hmm. Now, now. I think he's more interested in your profile in prison at 17. An icy chill fills your gut. And for murder too. You open your mouth, but nothing comes out. Since you got out, you've kept a low profile, but you're lying about your name and your address. I checked. It's, it's normal, I would say. If you get rid of your time serve, no loan for your permit, no lease for your car, meaning no second chance at life. Her voice becomes softer, almost warm. I personally like guys who want a second chance. No, I like guys who fight for a second chance. Basically, I like guys who are willing to work for me. She leans forward, her shining, cat-like eyes narrowing. My chief wants to go to the prosecutor with a first and last name with evidence. Actually, knowing him, he is not so hot on evidence. So, I'll give you info, victims, suspects, medical reports, some photos that are a bit, hmm, yeah, she makes a gagging noise. You have to be discreet, keep it between you and me. Interrogate, ask questions, dig around. 
I'm not asking you to make an arrest and deliver the killer wrapped up with a bow in front of the station, okay? You're not a bad man, you're just here to get me more information. She rummages around in her pockets for what seems like forever. Here's, take my card. I'll call you in three, four days, just to check in. We'll chat. And I'll let you know if I have any new info. She texts in a didactic, paternalistic tone, like she was giving you a list of recommendations for the hundredth time. Don't get caught, don't get arrested, or so. I wouldn't recommend trying to leave Paris. I know what you look like, and I know who your friends are. You can, you can either be the solution or the problem, my friend. She takes a minute to scan your face, your emotions. If I have to, I'll go check in on you know who. Her smile is beating. That reminds me, is she know you've done time? You shake your head, she snickers. Oh my little dirt bar, you cover your tracks well. She acknowledges your silence with a nod. Okay, I think you've got a handle on our little deal. Any problems? I turn you in. I'll send you a picture to all my friends in the media and every asshole in Paris. Your picture with your name on it, your real name. Anyone close to you will have their places searched, they'll be put under house arrest, the night in jail. Do you have an idea how tense things are with that focus trial anyway? Your sight, you know just what she's going trying to get at. Come to think of it, your last name are almost the same. It could be brothers, actually. She's just trying to pressure me. I don't care. She texts on a serious tone, business like. I want to catch this killer personally. I want to drive him to court. Ruin his fucking life with a bang. I can't budge this case. You got me? And never can you, right? He ripped up in your gut. You saw you all inside. You were in a coma, yeah. You have plenty of reason to want to get back at him. She furrows a brow. Yeah, I think you're actually going to do what I tell you to do. You investigate, ask questions, listen to all the rumors, and you come up with a list of suspects. She lays her hand on the door handle and freezes. Alright, uh, don't get fired. Without this cab, you're worth nothing to me. You glare at her. For what is worse, it was a pleasure not to be interrupted every other minute. You can't imagine how much I made that at work. She puts her hands up and you can hear the road behind it. This conversation never happened. I'll make sure you get more intel tomorrow. I'll find a way until then. Not a word to anyone, obviously. Not a word. The door pans, quicks, and slams shut. Fucking bitch. You sit alone for a while, teeth clenched, dry eyed, ear buzzing. Shit. On the back seat, the cop left a pile of paper. Like, she knows that I'm not my real name, not my real address, that I murdered someone before, that a certain person who I care about doesn't know anything and she just threatened my whole family and all my friends to be investigated, interrogated under house arrest and spend nights in jail and I sh should not get fired and I have to work for her for free dang it though shit key in the ignition, motor running Radio on crackles. You turn it off and start driving. 
Talking to passengers might unlock new documents and clues for your investigation. You will find them back at your studio after your shift. Six clues discovered, available in your room. What about now? Can I look at them now? Yes, maybe. That's a lot of worry. That's a lot of worry. Time to investigate. You take a second to enjoy the silence of your studio apartment. Outside, the city is slowly waking up. You can hear, you can still hear the hum of the taxi buzzing in your ears. You throw the file beside gave you on the table. On the wall, you hang up the big corkboard where you used to pin up photos of your nephews. Hervé, Claude, Pierre. They've been gone since you got out of. Your plan is simple. Jot down all the pieces of evidence and connect them to the suspects. The guilty party won't necessarily be the one with the most evidence against them, but the one with the most compelling evidence against them. Wow. It's like you're building a story about each suspect. Trying to understand their motives understand how he or she got into this situation. A buzz goes by, making the walls shake. You take your shoes off before getting to work. Ooh. Let's see, we have Hervé Greyou. A homeless man with an unknown background, briefly worked for Charles Bougrain, victim number two in the 90s. Got health issue after Rick Todin health scandal. A couple of arrests for breaking and entering. Claudia Campos, medical examiner in Paris. Escaped from Argentina when she was young. Less apparent to the Argentinian junta. Why is she a suspect? Piero Bata, dad was a cop died two years ago. Wait. Is it like the suspect or is it the victims? I'm confused. It has to be the victim, right? Dad was a cop. Mom got house issue with recording house scandal as well. Gay in a relationship. Never disclosed this information at work. Paul Marie Fragonard. Retired cop. Joined the police in 77. Divorced from a judge. Born in the French Antilles. Moved to mainland France in 76. Salim Wadian. Well known lawyer from Saint Ouen. Defender on the Douar case. Defender of several molested kids in poor neighborhoods. Was a promising football player when he was 10. Okay. Picture of crime, scene 1, scene 2, scene 3. Meritish. Deserved. Given by Busset. Who is Busset again? My buddy. Message on crime sign, justice. So it could be connected to Salim, because he's a judge. Then this one says deserved. And this one says um, time is over. Don't equally, time's up, yeah. You deserve this. From Recocta, I guess. It's kind of vague why those would be connected, but fine, fine, fine. Autopsy, autopsy. Autopsy victim number four and killer, killer case. 
Huh. Wow. So heavy. Only one thing and the height has to be under 180. Okay. Killer and use the victim or research them. No sign of violence, death execution. Weapon, rare gun used in the 70s. Killer left message in check on first three crimes. Seize. Victim killed with one bullet in the leg. Okay, it's not that clear for now, but that's why we need to interrogate it. That's it, right? And the knight. With a heavy hand, you wipe your tired face. You slowly open the sofa bed and lie down. The events of the day run through your head. The streets, the passengers, the faces, the problems. Your brain is running at full speed, your body aches and you're in pain. You can tell you need to get more sleep. You glance at your investigation board. It looks awfully empty. And are you sure this is the best? It's too soon to say. You shake your head and your mind wanders for a second. Just when you're about to fall asleep, you think you hear a voice in the distance. He's crying! You jump, without understanding where the voice is coming from. Outside, Paris is waking up. And you fall asleep. You open one eye. You find your studio calming. There's something special about living in a garret. Like, yours is the last place before the sky starts. You get up quickly. And a few minutes later, you're outside of your studio. Night two. Gas. Passenger, passenger, passenger. Interesting. I just wanted to do a short stream today, so that would be it for today. The game is so interesting. Like, it starts slowly, but I want to know more about the investigation, and so far, I feel like the, the writing is good, and I like the interaction. It's like, of course, it's just a visual novel, but I like the extra touch of driving, choosing your passengers, like having some choices here and there and like I'm actually interested in the main character today he's a very complex man and I'm very interested to this so I'm gonna play more so everyone thank you for watching see you next time take care bye